this man to my right said there's not a chance he will do just that. What do you say about that now? You might be thinking, why is there an Alex Talk Racing upload? It's Friday. Well, unfortunately, we missed yesterday, but welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. And we've got a serious amount of racing to get through and review. What's happened over the last week has probably been the busiest week in racing. We had the Cheltenham November meeting. Got plenty to look forward to this weekend as well. We had some star two-mile novices that we definitely need to get our teeth stuck into but before we go into that best bets last week i had an answer prayers at nine to two and a certain avw absolutely fired them in five best bets we had script writer four to one unanswered ten to one fenner's cross i think he went off eleven to four and then he, not even just that the tony martin horse who finished a, an agonizing second 20 to one yeah absolutely firing them yeah no it was a good weekend as usual you got to keep with the irish horses the, these irish handicappers going over uh Feder cross was a, a real satisfactory one back to him earlier on in the week uh, at a decent enough price got kept on getting back to him. The tony martin horse on the first day explosive boy like it was such an up but such a down like you, you love seeing them run well especially at that type of price but me, me and Dad went over. We had a good week because we need to get SBW on this podcast, I reckon, at some stage. He just keeps backing winners. I know. He had a handicap herd of winners left, right and centre. Yeah. If he, well, we go in. We rock in on the first day. He has a, the Cromwell horse on the first 12 to 1. He's got Annual Invictus on the second day, 12 to 1. Like, I don't know how you could have backed Annual Invictus. Like, I was looking at him going, you're a blind man looking at that form. But he just keeps backing them. He had, I like to move it in the great woods. Like, the man, handicap hurdles, a machine. Absolutely phenomenal. We had a great uh, couple of days. We went out on Friday night and got a bit messy. But thank you very much to all of those that came up to us. And uh, a, a big thanks to the people that were taking pictures of us blind drunk at three in the morning. Uh, not <laughs> so appreciative of you. That was a classic, though. Absolute classic. And we met some, <laughs> it was I met good. some great characters in the fish over the weekend. Featherfish is still one of the absolute all-time greats. There was one man... From Kelso, he wants me and SBW to go up to the Scottish Borders National next year. Tells me it's the race of the year. I might have to go in on it. We've been speaking to the owners of the Feathered Fish. Now, I don't want to get anyone excited, but hopefully, maybe before the festival, a Cheltenham Festival preview night in the fish, a Let's Talk Racing one with guests. Is that not just perfect? It would be absolutely fantastic. Look, we, we, we've given them enough business over the last year and a half, to be fair. We get people loading in. Uh, but no, it's a good spot. It's good fun. And uh, fingers crossed we'll be able to sort something out. Oh, big time. Um, but we do actually have a quick competition for you to win two tickets to the Tingle Creek at Sandown in a couple of weeks' time. All you simply have to do is like this video, make sure you subscribe to Let's Talk Racing, and simply comment LTR Creek. Not very original. But if you come on LTR Creek, we will announce the winner. We will draw it out in the start of the next video. But let's crack on because we've got so much racing to get stuck into. We're going to do it in, in chronological order. So we're going to start with Thursday last week. And I think an eye-catching novice hurdler was chasing fire for the weight leads at Market Raise and winning for Ollie Murphy. Obviously, you don't have to go back too far to remember Itchy Feet and Thomas Darby both placing in the same supreme novice hurdle. So when he does have a good one, they can mix it at the very top. I think he's been disappointed in recent years. But this lad, he, he didn't really beat anything at market reason, but he couldn't have done much more going about things. And I would actually probably have him up there amongst the top British novice hurdlers with probably Hermes Allen, who we'll touch on later, and also Authorised Speed, who I thought was very good. What did you make of Chasing Fire? Yeah, I thought he looked really good. And for an Ollie Murphy horse, he was, he was slick over his jumps. I think Ollie's put in an awful lot of work I think an awful lot of his novice chasers this year have jumped very well. I've been so impressed with the likes of Dr. Ken and the likes uh, also for the weight lease. But no, this horse, he, he didn't beat much, as you alluded to. He's going to have you know bigger tasks and bigger fish to fry in, in, in the future. But that being said, he's two from two under rules. Couldn't have done it any easier as well. And when he's winning that impressively under no real urgings from Aidan Coleman, it's usually a good sign. Obviously, racing at Cheltenham is usually very good and exciting. But Friday's card, I actually thought, hold my hands up, probably lacked 
a real superstar going into it. But then one emerged in Hermes Alain, who won the Ballymore Novices Hurdle trial. And this man to my right said there's not a chance he will do just that. What do you say about that now? Now you got to hold your hands up, Josh. I get things wrong an awful lot more than I get things right, and people will probably know at this stage. Uh, he was very impressive. He uh, beat Music Drive. He ran OK. Hubrisco, to me, just shaped like a horse that didn't stay. Uh, Travelled a bit too keenly, turned in, and then didn't find a whole pile. Uh, but he did it very well. He jumps well. He, he seems a very straightforward horse. You'd think the cello would be right up his street. Would I be backing him for anything at Cheltenham? No, probably not. Uh, I'd be somewhat surprised, even though he's gone and won at Cheltenham, whether he'd even rock up at the festival, uh, given what's happened over the last couple of years. So it's a hard one to, to really assess. Uh, music Drive. I have an epiphany with Music Drive that he may end up being a Martin Pipe horse for Gordon Elliott. Um, I just think he's not going to be... I think people have it in their head with Albert Bartlett. He needs a trip. I just don't think he's going to be up to grade one level, personally speaking. I think he's going to be better off maybe seeing in something like a Martin Pipe down the road. I thought Hermes Alain was very good. He jumped brilliantly. He had a real knack of kind of flicking the top and, and being so accurate and nimble over them. There was lots of talk about a possible Albert Bartlett tilt after the race or, or going for the Ballymore. But I do think that his jumping and the speed that he jumps will allow him to compete potentially even shorter than two and a half miles. I think he's got that accurate, neat jumping that you do need. I do think the Nigel Tuston Davis horse that finished third it deserves a mention, very eye-catching, having his first start over hurdles in a grade two. You'd imagine he'll come on bundles for it. I think he was learning the job early on in the race and he stayed up the hill. He could be a nice one for something like the Albert Bartlett down the line. But moving on to Saturday and some of the key horses at Cheltenham, the first being in the first, the Triumph Trial, that was script writer for Milton Harris. I'm not convinced by him, Andrew. I must say, I think his jumping needs to massively improve. I didn't think he jumped very well at all. And I'm not sure he beat an awful lot. Like, for, for me, I know they're talking about the Triumph Hurdle route, but I, I, I don't think he'll be competitive in a Triumph Hurdle. And even if he had a, a nice handicap mark for a Boodles, I don't think he'd be competitive for that. But personally, I just don't really see it with him at all. No, I, I somewhat get your, your, your opinion on that brigade, especially when you back a horse, you usually end up having a better opinion of them. Uh, that being said, if you told me before the race the Nichols horse would run deplorably and suddenly stop as if shot at the top of the hill, I'd have had a very long face thinking script writer couldn't pick up the rest of these. War correspondent run a pretty, won a pretty average maiden hurdle around Punchestown. Uh, the Perseus way for Gary Moore was on his first start. He ran a grand race. I don't think he's any world beater, but will pick up races this year. He seems a good horse script rider, but he's a bit of a monkey at the same stage. He doesn't do much when he gets to the front. As you say, his jumping can be scruffy. He's got a lot to learn. If he does learn it, he could maybe make up into a, a, a like a proper grade one horse, maybe for Aintree, come to the back end of next season, a little bit like Knight Salute did, but he'd have to learn a plenty between then and now for you to really be entertaining it. And I think it's going to be one of those races that you look back in a year or two's time and go, that wasn't a great race whatsoever. Bambridge was very impressive on Saturday, probably my performance of the day. Now, he's won a beginner's chase over three miles. He's won the Master Pipe over two and a half. And then he stepped down in trip over two and won the Arkle trial. Like, the world is this hoist, horse's oyster. In my opinion, Glory and Fortune was travelling very well. It wasn't out of the race. I don't think he'd have beaten Bambridge. But Glory and Fortune is a low to mid 140s horse. And Bambridge, if he goes to Leopardstown at Christmas or, or goes along those routes, like he's going to be bumping into possibly a 155, mid 150s novice hurdler of Willies that's going to improve for offence. Yeah, it's a hard one to, to quantify. Look, throughout this episode, I'm sure me and you will come up with a few opinions that not everyone will will agree with and, and not everyone will, will potentially like to, to hear. I think the, the reaction with this horse is, is very over the top. Personally speaking, I didn't think it was much of a race. I'd be, be a bit like you with scriptwriter, to be honest. Tommy's Oscar just doesn't seem to like Cheltenham. He wants a flatter track. Glory and Fortune was going okay when he came down. Mon Morale was obviously a massive defection from the race. He's jumped perfectly well, but he was more than entitled, really, to beat plenty of these horses uh, based off his Martin Pike form, based off his beginner's chase run. And I just don't see it, really. I don't see him being in the three in, in any grade one novice chase at the festival. I think he's a very good jumper, which will always help him and will always endear him to the racing public as a result. And I do understand that, but I think there's going to be limitations with this horse and I'm probably going to keep taking him on until I can find them. 
Garlow had his big day in the Paddy Power Gold Cup. I do think that Midnight River and Il Rodoto are two to take from the race. Il Rodoto travelled very well, didn't quite get up the hill. Um, and I think drop down to two miles would see him to a good effect in a really fast run handicap. And the Midnight River, R- Midnight River again, given quite a quiet ride, I think that he's only going to improve. What did you make of Garlow? Yeah, he did. He did it very well in the end, considering a lot went wrong for him. He was skirmished around early on and still made a few mistakes uh, near the back end of the race. As you say, I think if this race was being run around Newbury, I think Il Rodoto would have won. I, I thought he was the winner turning in. I was obviously very disappointed. I, I really liked French Dynamite for the race. Everything went right. He was in the right position. He jumped super. And they just made that fiddly mistake at the last. Whether it was the winning and losing of the race, I'm not sure. Uh, I think there is a big pot in him at some stage. I would worry that that chance may have gone on the weekend. Uh, and he'll be shoved up a few pounds for it as well. But good on Gallo. Uh, it was a, a very good performance. A very good ride from Johnny Burke as well. Who I think people are finally coming to, to terms with the fact of how good a rider Johnny Burke is. I think he's gone under the radar in England the last couple of years. and he, he's, he's as good as it gets really I think. And he's shown both with him and Queen's Gamble how good he is on the weekend. Talking of Queen's Gamble. Does Oliver Sherwood have a potential champion bumper horse? in her because she was mightily impressive yeah she was and and she's more than entitled to go that route uh she she picked these horses up very very impressively now again you know she's won the race 10 lengths on the bridle so i don't want to crap it because she was absolutely superb and i i really like when you know trainers like oliver sherwood no disrespect to him but a slightly smaller trainer has a very good horse and we can start thinking that this may be a grade one horse but at the same stage the Mullins horse at the top of the hill has dipped out and and, and tried to jump the the kind of wing at the side and Paddy Brennan had Bonte around 100 lengths off the pace going around the first time. I agree the one thing that I did learn about Bonte is she's had plenty of niggly issues and they weren't sure she'd turn up 75% 75% as good as she'd been before. So they were giving her a quiet ride because they wanted to give her a uh, builder confidence. I don't think they expected that Bonte to turn up because when Paddy asked her up the hill, she flew and she, she stayed on very well. And if you kind of take the winner out of the race, she wins very, very, very cosily. And I do think that if they'd known that that Bonte would have turned up, that she'd have finished a bit closer to Queen's Gamble. Not saying she'd have won, but I do think she'd have finished a lot closer and maybe given her a race. Yeah, no, and that's very fair. And look, it's the way they ride their bumper horses, you know, in the main. They usually do give them a fair bit to do and they come home late and they come home fast. It just looked on this occasion, you know, when when she finished so well and the bird's completely flown that you could have had her maybe a little bit closer to the pace. But, you know, very easy from the armchair seats, uh, as it always is. The, The mayor of Queen's Gamble was very good. Would I be carrying away saying she was performance of the weekend? No, I wouldn't don't think she's performance of the weekend but i do think that from what we've seen so far she's right up there amongst champion bumper hopes ash Rowe diamond over at nace on saturday i thought was very impressive it wasn't like an on the bridle sexy but what she beat i think will turn out to be a very good race now just to go through them the second one a 21 runner point to point the third ran in the champion bumper um and he has form behind halibut the fourth one at the Punchestown Festival, won a Punchestown Festival bumper, beating Sir Ergus and James's gate. The fifth was seven lengths behind Marine Nationale on his previous start. The seventh was a close second to Imperial Ruler and a nine length third behind Bambridge and a maiden hurdle. So there's decent form all the way behind that race. And she didn't win it on the bridle or cosily. But I think that race, and especially as she was a mare I know she gets the weight allowance but she was a mare taking on the lads I think it was a good run I think that she's right up there amongst the the novices that we've seen for the mare's race yeah no I, I I'd agree to to a certain expect with, with some of that obviously a mare taking on the geldings was a was a decent piece of placing from Willie Mullins and a decent bit of hope from him that she was good enough to go and do that and she's one scrappy which sometimes you need to see I thought she'd maybe be a little bit more visually impressive than she was, but it was her first start of the season. She'll come on plenty for that. There's plenty of mares and office races for her to go back to now, and you'd have to think she'll go down a, a Brandy Love or a Allegory de Vassy route, maybe running that graded novice hurdle at Fairy House, and then on to the mares and office at Cheltenham in March. Brazil beat Phil Dor over at Nace on the same card and it looks like the grade two sporting Limerick hurdle on the 29th of December 
is his likely next destination. Why do you think Fildor ran here? Because I thought they were going to make use of him over fences with all the allowances early on in the season. Do you think he's maybe not schooled as well as they thought he would? Yeah, I'm not sure what the story is. You know, it seems to be a little bit of a, a strange one. He, he then didn't jump as well as he certainly did last year. Like, I can I can barely remember him making a mistake last year as a juvenile. And he was going around clouting things the other day. Kind of threw the race away as well. It landed in Brazil's lap. He was able to pick it up. I think Brazil's a good horse. I don't think he's any world beater. I think he's a hard horse to place this year. Interesting that he's going to go down that Limerick route, which may suit and may be a winnable race at a grade two level, but he's going to be tough to, to really get behind in a grade one contest. And if he was to go down and win at Limerick, that's where he's going to have to go next. Phil Dorr, unless they know something we don't know, I'd just throw this horse over a fence. I think he's just made for it. I think that's exactly what he wants as well. Yeah, I think he was just simply a quicker and fitter horse, Brazil, on the day. Uh, Jeremy's Flame at Nace. Uh, Gentleman to me came down at the last. What did you make of his run? Because he was beaten. Yeah, he was beaten. Uh, of course, a blind fell and kind of brought him down. Uh, Gentleman to me, a horse that, that, that seems to be on the top of the radar for many. And I know people will think I may be after time saying it. He, he never did it for me now. Um, I'd have him down in great field car category stuff, you know, a horse, a bit of a tear away, you know, has won some races, may win some more races in his time, but certainly not going to, you know, get an ergamine quaking in his boots. I thought Jeremy Flame could easily have won this race, even if Course of Lime didn't come down. Course of Lime's the first horse in the party to shirk a battle. Uh, I know he's good fresh, but uh, he loves throwing up the white flag when things get tough. And he was only a half, or the mare was only a half length down when jumping the last I think she'd have won. Gavin Cromwell's are in good nick at the moment. and She's a very good mare. She's a, she's a high-quality mare. She's probably not grade one level, but she'll pick up plenty of prize money. What was your thoughts on Three Stripe Life's chasing debut? Yeah, I thought he was a little safe uh, at times. I was maybe expecting it to be a little easier than it was looking. Unfortunately, the ill-fated grand jury came down at two out, having put up a pretty bold show. Three Stripe Life, I think, would have beaten him, but I think he'd have had to have worked hard to beat him, and I was maybe hoping he'd do it a little easier than that. He'll come on for it. Wonder where Gordon's going to go with all these horses. He's got three or four horses that you'd think, in theory, could all run in the Drinmore, uh, but he won't run them all, I suspect. Uh, so I don't know where Three Stripe Life may go. I suspect he might be one that, that may miss the Drinmore uh, with the likes of Mighty Potter and maybe a Hollow Games going that route. Three Stripe Life, the plan is the Drinmore. Um, Gordon did say afterwards that, that he would be going that way. So I, I presume that will be where his next start is. It makes plenty of sense. I agree with the safe jumping point. The one thing I would say is, unlike almost every horse we've spoken about today, he had no point-to-point -point education. He didn't have any run in a point-to-point -point early on. So like this is very much him learning how to jump fences on the job, which is unlike plenty of other novice chasers this season. So I'd give him time. I think he will improve over fences. Let's move on then to Sunday and... I like to move it on the Greatwood at Cheltenham. It looks like the international hurdle is next. I did think it was a tough performance off a, a top weight against a clearly well-handicapped horse of Harry Fry's. Do you think I like to move it can develop into a bit of a, a bally Andy when he was winning those two-mile grade twos, kind of a champion hurdle trial type horse? Yeah, I think he certainly could. I was really taken by him, I must say. I loved him in the parade ring beforehand. Really relaxed horse, just goes about his business. But he was electric on the track. He jumped pretty well in the main. I know there was only five or six hurdles to get over. And he, he shirked off Jim Coco, who I'm not sure really wanted to go by. Uh, it was a very good performance. He won it easily. But my overriding feeling... And I, I wouldn't be laying I like to move it in the international. I thought he was far and away the best of that Greatwood field. It must have been the worst Greatwood ever run, though. My lord, some of the horses in behind were are, are relatively average beasts. As I say, the Harry Fry horse, I didn't think wanted to know in terms of going by the Tristan Davis horse. And the rest of them were out in the car park. Like You, you almost had to get the binoculars out to see who was coming in third and fourth. So it wouldn't be a race I'd be taken to the well. Uh, but I think the winner was very good. Fenner's Cross won the Supreme Trial, and he just found bundles for pressure. It was ridiculous. Yeah, he was off the bridle going around the first time. I was going, oh, Lord above, look at this. Uh, but he just kept finding, kept finding, and ended up grinding it out. Beat you can tango, ran a great race for Ali and, and Sean Bowen. Uh, the, the John Joe horse was probably just a bit green, a bit novice still. He, he may still end up being the best horse in that race. Um, I think Fenner's Cross... 
I really love John McConnell's horses, as people will know. I think that may have been his day in the sun, to be honest. A grade two win with that horse. I think that's a tremendous piece of training and placing to get that horse to win a grade two, because I think he's no more than a grinder. Hollow Games made his chasing debut over two miles and one at Navan, and Jesus, he was impressive. He was. Now, I want to see whether this was actually Hollow Games that turned up, because his horse showed a bit of boot. Like, he was the slowest horse on planet Earth last year. He was getting scrubbed along halfway through the Martin Pipe, and yet he was beating horses that will end up being really good, either graded horses or handicappers there the other day, and did it very nicely, jumped well, would have been right up there in terms of performance of the weekend for me, Josh. I was really impressed, and he was a horse that I didn't like at all last year. Well, he'll inevitably go up in trip. How high do you think he could rank amongst two and a half, three milers this season? It's hard to know. We'll know more next time out. Again, he's another one of these horses. Does he go to the Drinmore? Does Gordon suddenly rock up with three or four in the Drinmore? Maybe so. Um, but that, that would give us a gauge whether he's right up to grade one level. But if he's come forward as much as certainly that run may have suggested over fences from hurdles, then it wouldn't surprise me at all if he was a grade one novice chaser. Thoughts on Hercule de Soy? Yeah, he did it very well, grounded out well. My overriding uh, feeling in that race was the second and third of the, are the ones really to take out of it. I think Imagine is still unfurnished. Uh, I know he's probably a smaller type to three card brag, who's a real uh, you know, two and a half, three mile chaser in, in the making on soft ground. Really liked that piece of form at Galway, as I've mentioned before. Uh, but also imagine, I think he's one to certainly keep on side. He'll win plenty of races. I think three card brag is the first of, I'd imagine many, that is on the, it's penciled on my shortlist for something like the Martin Pipe if they were to turn up at Cheltenham. Up in trip, a big improver, Gordon Elliott horse. I think that he's that kind of mould. Don't think he's a grade one horse by any stretch of the imagination. And at home by the Lee won in extraordinary circumstances. I couldn't actually believe that he won. Uh, beating Bob Ollinger in the Liz Mullen hurdle, we had the likes of Florian Porter behind them. How do you assess this? Do you assess this as Bob Ollinger has beaten Florian Porter a good way and he's back and he'll come on for the run? Or how do you look at things with home by the Lee? Are you disappointed with Florian Porter? Like, it's a really muddling race to, to, to get my head around. Yeah, I, I'm finding it really tricky. Home by the Lee was off the bridle going around the first time. You thought this horse was going absolutely nowhere, and he's won pretty easy in the end. Now, I suppose the balance of his form isn't as bad as some people make it out to be. You know, he was only beaten six or seven lengths in the stairs last year, you know, in front of some half-okay horses. So, you know, he's not, he's not a bad horse. Florian Porter ran like a horse that just severely needed it. And I think he's, he's, he really needs every step of three miles these days. He looked a little short of pace. Bob, for 99% of the race, as plenty of people will, will say, 99% of the race, I was eating my words because I wasn't really a fan of him for this year, going back hurdling. And I'm thinking, looking at this on the big screen at Cheltenham, I've got it all wrong. But it's the same old thing again. That head goes up to one side. He cocks his jaw. And I just think he doesn't really want to know under pressure. Now, he's going to be a horse that will win plenty of races still. Because he'll be able to win a lot of races not coming off the bridle. But this horse is not one you'd really want in a battle, I don't think. And I don't think, I know people are saying he wants it. And the next step seems to be this three-mile hurdle at Christmas time. I don't think he wants any inch of three miles, personally speaking. I, d I just don't see him getting it. No, I think it is interesting that they are going to go that route inevitably. And I do think that Connections are expecting him to come on a lot for it. I think they left a good bit of work and there is improvement there. That being said, when I watch his way of going about things, he seems speed over stamina. And I'm not sure about three miles. I'd love to see it. I just don't see him grinding it out in a three-mile race. Like, he's not going to be able to win a stairs hurdle on the bridle. And I, I, I actually do think he'd be able to win some races, certainly over two and a half. Now, I know there's no Cheltenham races over two and a half over hurdles, but he'll be able to win races pretty much on the snap because he's, so, he's got so much cruising speed. He's such a quality animal. You know, and I do accept that, but it's just this idea that I think he really shirks a battle if he was really involved in one the head goes up to one side and i don't like the look of that at all and it's something i don't like the look of with any horse let alone bob Ollinger. 
We will touch on Captain Guinness, who won on the same card. Do you think he, he was he was pretty good? Yeah, he was. He's very good. I think connections are, are going to go over for the Tingle Creek, who two, one person may be there to watch Captain Guinness in that Tingle Creek if you've entered or the competition. Two, or, two. or two. You can bring your bring your friend, bring your girlfriend, whatever you feel. But um, like I, I think he was very good. He could run well in, in Tingle Creek. Is he going to win a Tingle Creek? Probably not. But he's a really solid grade two horse and... I'd say an absolute love for connections. Jeez, you'd absolutely love it if you had a horse that kept scooping up those types of races. At Exeter on Monday, another high-profile chasing debut, this time from McFabulous, who beat Unexpected Party. It was a, a horrible little race because Campron came down so early and was interfering with them all. He's now going to run in Exeter over three miles uh, on December the 2nd before going on to the Corto Star. What did you think of his chasing debut? I actually thought it was pretty good, and I've not been in love with McFabulous at any stage of his career, but I did think that he looked every inch a chaser. He did. He jumped really well, and he seems to have gone through a bit of a midlife, McFabulous, because he's gone from a pretty flashy bridle horse that didn't find a whole pile to a bit lazy, a bit behind the bridle, but if you get stuck into him, he finds and finds. I thought, coming down to two hours, unexpected party had his measure, but he went away and won easy. Now, I don't know whether that's a combination of him finding more and the second maybe needing the run. Uh, it's a real shame. Unexpected party would have been some shoe in back in the day for the novices' handicap at Cheltenham, I think, if they'd managed to push him under 145. He's a lovely horse, jumped really nice, will win plenty. Uh, but McFabulous will be good. Type of horse that could win a Corto Star, actually. I don't think he'd almost win any other grade one over fences. But if there's any race that could suit him, it would be that. No, I agree with that completely. On Tuesday, Jerry Cologne made his chasing debut at Fairy House, and he did do it very well to the extent where they're looking at the Fahee novice chase at Limerick on uh, the December the 26th as his next start, obviously up in Grade 1 company there. He's going to be better over three miles, undoubtedly, but he did jump well, and I do think that he is a serious horse over fences. He, he did look at, yeah, he was a duck to water really over them. Now, helped by the fact that he was, you know, on the speed in a slowly run race. Braun, who came in second, made a few mistakes. And I just wonder whether this horse really does need proper soft ground, which would just be in the back of my mind if thinking about this horse for Cheltenham. But he's a really, really high quality horse. And if they manage to keep him right, which has been a little bit of a difficulty in, in times gone by, if they can do that, he's a really serious horse, I think and a proper Irish three-mile grade one horse. Search for Glory won the bumper on the same card for Jigginstown. I cannot keep up with how many that they've bought this season. It seems like they've got a newcomer coming out of every single ear. Uh, Wednesday, John Bon Warwick. Wow. Very, very good. Beating Mon Morel. Mon Morel tried to keep up with him in the early stage of the race and I think they both jump pretty well I think Mon is going to be a fantastic two and a half three mile down the line I think that he's going to be a King George horse in two or three years time he's written all over him stayed on well to the line but the winner did it very well I've got to put my hands up he was seriously good yeah oh, he's absolutely fantastic he just mustered to jump he was over hurdles he's now over fences he, he, he's some horse to watch really John Bond he does have and I know I said it a couple of times last year and I don't like making massive comparisons but he has an awful lot of Duvan swagger about him the way he travels the way he kind of attacks and almost eats obstacles you know they just don't exist to him really he loves going down to them and jumping he did that over hurdles it was nothing different at Warwick on Wednesday I would like to ask you though like can you please Talk to me about this price for the Oracle. Because I, I understand, you know, he was obviously second in the Supreme. And people are looking at it, probably going, Constitution Hill's not there. So therefore, he would have won the Supreme if Constitution Hill wasn't there. But in my mind, there was probably three or four Irish novices that would have finished ahead of him in certain circumstances in that race. So how can he be a two-to-one shot for the Oracle with, I think, it being sevens or eights bar? When he like he, he hasn't like the only Irish horse he's beaten has been El Fabiolo, and he did that by a half length when El Fabiolo was a very inexperienced horse. I just don't like I know anti pose betting is, is somewhat in the pits at the moment, but two to one is chronic. I think he's going to continue looking seriously good because he's going to come up. I've Mon Morel, there's not gonna be many better two mile novice chases that John Bond's gonna meet before the Arkle. And John Bond's going to look like a superstar going into the Arkle. I've said this a couple of times on this podcast. 
and he's going to bump in to one of Willie's and I will oppose John Bond because he's not going to have a really tough race before and we don't know how good he is. Obviously, he jumped spectacularly well, but I think there are better novice hurdlers last year going chasing. For instance, obviously, he's running in the Morgiana on Sunday. I think we'll find out how good he really is. But Sir Gerhard, if he was going to go chasing, I don't think Willie would be thinking about a champion hurdle with him if he thought that he was a boat. Um, I think that he could easily start over two and stay over two. And I think Sir Gerhard has got more ability than John Bond. And Dice Up Dynamo, Fabiolo, like these are really good horses. I think they've got it to prove. But the likes of, if Stateman goes novice chasing, if Sir Gerhard goes novice chasing after this weekend, they're going to be seriously, seriously, seriously good. And they'd be the angles I'd look at in the article rather than a two-to-one John Bond. I do think that was ludicrous. It is interesting. It really is interesting. Um, but talking about this weekend, uh, we should quickly blitz through uh, the main highlights. We're not going to go in, in massive details. We do have some best bets for you afterwards. But Aplutard goes to Haydock, and so do I. I'm following Aplutard up there. Really looking forward to my first trip to Haydock. He should just win, should just run on whatever ground that goes there. And unless Aplutard is 80% and protector at, this is his gold cup, I don't see how that form's turned around whatsoever. No, I agree with you. Keep it short and simple on some of these. I think Aplutar, if he turns up anywhere near what he did last year, he wins this again. And I kind of hope he does. It would be good for racing if he can continue to be the star that he's been showing over the last couple of years. It feels almost horrible not to be going to Ascot on the same day, but two great cards. Constitution Hill. Let's just talk about him. We're going to see him over two miles and three. It's not your usual champion hurdle prep that being said he's probably going to go to maybe christmas the, uh, the the christmas hurdle or skip that and go to Sandown for the contenders like his campaign this side of the champion hurdle is going to be i think very much just only thing to think about is march he should pick these up and laugh at them if he can translate last year's form to this year. Like John Bond's done in the world of good bolting up the other day. Yeah, he has. Look, he's a very, very special horse, I think. And again, a little bit similar to Aplutar, you want to see stars in the game. And I think he is a star. Um, he, he should win this race, as you say. You know, maybe something like a Bruno up a storm may come second to him if he ran to his best. Uh, good to, hopefully he can get a clear round in. But you're just hoping he wins, wins impressively. I think Nicky just wants to keep him to, to all these tracks he knows and loves, the Ascots, the Kemptons of the world. He obviously was very good at Sandown a few times last year, so it wouldn't be a surprise to see him back there in February for that contender's hurdle. But we won't probably learn too much about Constitution Hill between now and Cheltenham, so we're not going to be in much more of a, a situation where we have more to form upon when we get to that champion hurdle discussion come March, but fingers crossed he won't have blogged his copybook. The most intriguing race of the weekend comes from Punchestown. And it's the Willie Mullins Morgiana hurdle. He's running potentially six in it. And they're all of his top two mile hurdlers. I basically think it's a fact finding mission, isn't it? I think he doesn't know, should I send to Gerhard chasing? Should I send Stateman chasing? Is Vorban up to it yet? How good is Sharjah at this time of year? Like, he just doesn't know. So why not run them all against each other? Noble thing to do. I absolutely can't wait. It's going to be brilliant. Like, Stateman and uh, and Vorban and Sir Gerhard all going up against each other. If it happens, that'll be brilliant because we really will have a pecking order at that point, especially if all of them are, are, are pretty much fit enough to be showing a high level of ability. The one interesting topic is, is Paul Townend's going to have the pick of these. Who's he going to ride? Who would you ride? Uh, well, I, I don't know whether it's bias aside. I would ride Stateman myself. I'm in love with Stateman. I think he's absolutely mustard. Um, for some reason I, I, I could be well proven wrong on that I still have my doubts obviously by the time plenty of t people will be watching this video the, the official entries will be out me and dad are heading down to punch us down for the Morgan on Sunday we can't wait to see it and we'd love to see all six my my overriding concern is that we're going to rock up tomorrow morning um, or this morning as you're watching this and there's going to be four Mullins entries and two of those three won't be there that he'll have one but he'll then run Saldia, Sharjah and Echoes in Rain. Because they rock up to the Morgiana every year. They're, they're family friends of the Morgiana at this stage. Um, I would hope that two of the other three will run. 
Uh, I just, I really like State Man, and that's that's the horse I want to see run. I hope he's entered, and I hope he wins. It is fascinating. I'd love all of them to run. If they all do run, I think, I think Townend would ride Vorban. I think they'll have Rachel on Sir Gerhard because she rode him to win the champion bumper. I think Brian Cooper would ride, potentially ride State Man, and then Paddy on Sharjah. I think that could be the way that they go about things. It'd be interesting, um, but what a fascinating race if they do all turn up. Now, let's talk about best bets for the weekend. I've got four. I'll quickly fire through them. Uh, one is the day of this Friday at Ascot in the 130. I like Dan Skelton's Don Hollow at 9-2. to two. I thought the, the first run over hurdles was very, very good. He finished a close third to Uka Tango, who ran very well at Cheltenham the other day of Ollie Murphy's. And I think that he's going to come on considerably for that. It is a good race. And it wouldn't surprise me if the winner is very useful going forward. I just think Don Hollow could be pretty good. On Saturday in the 2.25, Mai Tai um, at 4-1. Uh, Saturday at Ascot for the same owners, 3.15. Boot Hill, 9-2. And then at Saturday at Punchestown uh, for the 3.23. Jungle Pro, who I put up the other day. He goes again. I can't imagine he's going to be a big price, but I think that he'll be doing an awful lot of winning. Chi, sorry, could go pretty well. Yeah, well, I've got five myself. I'll run through them quickly again. One for today, uh, the 2.05 at Ascot. I feel like you, Josh, and putting up a Ben Pauling horse. You seem to love these types of horses. I quite like your darling in this at 15 to 2. Really good horse, fresh. Seems to be the best time to find him off 123. Three on Saturday, one at Punchestown in the Craddock's Down on 103. Hallowed Star for Shark and Danny Mullins. I think he's the best horse in this race. Poor enough Craddock's Down, to be honest. The 3.15 Ascot on Saturday. So Scottish for Emmett Mullins at 11 to 2. Best price at the moment. I think he's a very interesting lurker in this. Michael O'Sullivan takes the ride must have a good chance the 335 at saturday on at haydock at uh, the big three mile one handicap chase i quite like rapper for henry daly and richard patrick 16 to 1 of a mark of 139 he's coming down the weights i think he's got a very good each way chance at a ground and, and a trip that will suit and then the big one on sunday the 1255 at punches down a two mile six handicap chase a horse called farceur de large for Noel Mead and Owen Walsh off of Mark 130. Good front running, good jumping grey. He probably would be the best of the five, but more tentative than I was on Fenner's Cross. Fenner's Cross was all in. This is a half in job. Yeah, no, and that definitely paid off. Um, do enjoy the racing if you are going to Haydock or Ascot or Punchestown over the weekend or anywhere um, that might be hosting racing. Uh, do get involved in the competition. Two tickets for the Tingle Creek. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to Let's Talk Racing and comment LTR Creek. So L-T-R-C-R-E-E-K for your chance to win those tickets completely on the house. Please do get involved and we'll see you soon.